In this video, I would like to emphasize the data analytics process from the data mining and machine learning standpoint. So the first figure here is a very abstract overview of the process by Ian Whitten et al. in the latest edition of their data mining book. It starts with proper interplay between understanding business and the domain problem versus understanding of data. As a team, you need to make sure that you can articulate the problem statement and the objectives you set out to achieve. And given the data that are already available or what you can potentially access, you should examine what is in the data and whether you have relevant variables and sufficient data instances uh, to address the identified problem. The understanding of the business problem will also feed into the process and metrics for final evaluation of results. This should also guide data preparation, transformation, and modeling so that they are aligned with the objectives and the problem that you set out to resolve. Results and evaluation may lead to um, findings and better understanding of the business problem and therefore further iterations of the mining and analytics may be necessary. Ultimately, your modeling and evaluation may become integrated into the production system of a business. So this is a very broad overview of the process. Now, I would like to delve deeper uh, into some of the processes. In particular, I would like to lay out a separation in terms of what machines or computer can perform versus what we as intelligent members of a data analytic team can do to supervise the computing workflow. Data mining and analytics is a process that involves human and machine collaboration. On the machine side, as shown in the middle of this picture here, computers can help us collect, process, store, and retrieve, and even distribute data. We can rely on them to, for automatic data cleansing and transformation, for unsupervised learning, uh, to reveal patterns and associations in the data, and for the actual modeling, for classification or numeric uh, prediction. And if we can quantify criteria and metrics for evaluation, machines can easily aggregate the results and spit out quantities about the performances. Overall, all these can be conducted in iterations where one step leads to another. Computers are good at crunching numbers uh, for the, these tasks. However, uh, intelligence and supervision have to come from us in the analytics team, without which machine algorithms would labor in vain. After all, computers do not understand the business problem and the demand and context in which data are provided. These are really intelligent tasks that can only be accomplished by human experts in the business domain. Uh, we also have the responsibility to determine whether the data can be used to answer the proposed questions and ultimately whether the answer is valid and reliable or not. Statistical analysis and visualization can help us along the way, but human understanding and interpretation is key. We also need to make decisions on related steps such as data cleansing, transformation, and what algorithms with specific uh, parameters to be used in the actual modeling. Uh, we identify the metrics suitable for the nature of the problem at hand and assess the results in terms of these metrics. And finally, back to the business problem and understanding of data, results and findings should be properly interpreted and communicated to stakeholders in the project. In the previous slide, the problem statement and objectives should be reviewed throughout the mining and analytics process. What problem do we set out to resolve? What questions do you want to answer from crunching the data? From the machine learning point of view, what do you want 
your model to learn from data. And this is what we refer to as concept in machine learning. What to be learned from data and the outcome of the learning is therefore concept description. In another word, the concept is a specific meaningful pattern, relation, or association that can be uh, discovered from data. We can often break various algorithms into uh, different styles or types of learning, such as classification or supervised learning, association learning, unsupervised partitioning or, or clustering, and numerical prediction on a continuous scale. So to understand why this matters, we have to come back to the very question of our objectives and what is important when we communicate the results to stakeholders. Different from scientific research, data analytic projects are much more than testing statistical significance. In certain projects, hypotheses uh, may be tested and significance can be reported. The focus here, however, is more on information discovery, pattern identification, and predictive analytics. Perhaps the business wants to identify uh, major groups and themes about its customers so they can better serve them. Perhaps the goal is to identify the degree of association and the circumstances under which related variables or factors influence one another. Perhaps your objective is to predict and diagnose uh, based on known symptoms in the medical domain. The question is the degree of association and how accurately you can actually predict. With sufficient data, you can almost always obtain significant results. But the effect size, in a sense, or how reliable you can make predictions is more important. Now let's use a very simple example uh, to illustrate some related points based on the notion of concept. If we understand the basic goal of data analytics to identify meaningful patterns, that is information, and discover knowledge or concept, then let's look at how we can move from data to information to concept or knowledge and perhaps to truth or not. So look at the data here. When you see the data, lots of numbers here, they might be useful, but at this point, they probably make no sense. What do they mean? Data, no matter how much you have, are useless if no meaning has been attached to them. Now, let's suppose the data come with some organization and structure with proper interpretation. And we know that each row here is an observation or, or data instance of a shape where the columns are about what height, the number of sides of the shape, and the class of the shape. Now, a value of the class indicates whether the shape is standing versus lying. Now, let's suppose the concept of standing is what we want to learn or we want our algorithms to be able to learn from data. So what does it mean to be standing? This is the question. Can we learn from values of width, height, and size and see how they determine the class outcome? What variables are relevant to this concept? Is it the number of sides, width, or height individually? Or is it based on some relation between our width and height? It turns out, as our own intelligence can easily tell uh, from the data that we see, a shape is standing when height is greater than width. Mathematically, this is when uh, height divided by width is greater than 1, or height minus width is greater than 0. Given this mathematical simplicity, uh, the concept standing can be quantified, operationalized, and identified with the computer, which is 
good at crunching numbers. So in the end, the concept can potentially be learned from, from data when the relations are examined. From the human perspective, you can think of the concept as knowledge after we examine the data, identify the pattern that can help us understand on the notion of standing and then internalize into our understanding. Now from concept or knowledge to truth, is it guaranteed that the concept or knowledge is universally applicable? We always have to examine the underlying assumption, assumptions in the data and those in related learning models. In the current example about the concept of standing, we we'll assume the standpoint of looking at human-like objects. A person appears to be standing when the height is greater, as in the first picture. But does it mean that the White House in the second picture is not standing simply because its width is greater? One problem here is with the data we have. What we learn from that data can only be applied to the domain where they come from. They are not necessarily representative universally. Otherwise, related shapes such as the White House could have been included and the concept of standing could become much more complex than what we discuss here. In the end, we have to examine all these in the real world context. And that's the ground for analytics and modeling. That's it about the process and concept. Let me know your questions and comments.